Mayday, Mayday, no Mayday! Hey everyone, it's a podcast. How's it all going? We've been on a sort of hiatus, although you haven't felt it, we definitely have. Isn't that right, Phil? I have felt nothing but joy. Okay, well, it's it's Phil's fault. Let's just get this straight out. It's Phil's fault. He was a no-show... Uh, I don't know what happened to him. I'm, what did I'm happen sorry. to you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I mean, I'm not sorry. I'm not apologizing for anything. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm no. sorry to interrupt you. That's no. What I'm no, no, no. We agreed that... Not nothing. No, no. This is my explanation. No, 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 no. Okay, well, let's, let's go on the course that we have written out. It's time for a proverb slash quote. Um, this one. So just random, I just picked a quote at random is uh, about apologies maybe one should take note <clears throat> and this is here we go right actions in the future are the best apologies for bad actions in the past wow I shit on your proverbs <laughs> I shit on them okay well We've done the proverb now. Coming up On next to Phil's is Phil's explanation. apology. It's Phil's apology. Everyone. I don't even know what I'm explaining to people. Yeah, well, you like should. Like you said, hello. You oh, hang on. Apologizing. Hang on. I'm not apologizing. Let you me be Owen be. for a moment. Oh no. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh no. Well, oh. Nobody should have missed anything, Governor. Nobody should have noticed anything because of the emergency podcast. That's right. They don't know. This is right on schedule. They might have noticed a little shift in the amount of time during those podcasts. Okay, okay. Hour. Let's let's break it down for everyone. It's currently four twenty-eight on a Thursday afternoon. The podcast goes out on a Thursday. It's what the twentieth or the third. That's but see, we never should have it. We record on a Thursday. He's we don't record on a Thursday. We always record it. No, we Thursday. don't. We do it on a Sunday, and now you you thrown everything off. Yeah, look, they probably stopped listening by now. Let us stop our griping. The Let's, explanation is uh, this. I would apologize because I'm too big for it. It's her. not an apology. I didn't uh, do anything wrong. We had you did. escape podcast. You've destroyed the system. We're back in the saddle, though. The right? system is in utter dismay. Okay, you don't have to apologize to the no, right. to the viewers, the listeners. You have to apologize to your partner. I'm not apologizing. Look, I am sorry for that Sunday that I should have... What about have, the other week? I should have contacted you and said... You just left Look, me stranded, man. I am unconscious. Please forgive me for not <laughs> making it. I'm sorry. No, no, really. I was irresponsible on that Sunday, so that was Are you apologizing? Fault. I apologize for that. And what about the other week? I don't... You, there's Nobody remembers anything. <laughs> well, what are so you, you even talking about? Don't try and hide. I'm not hiding. I honestly don't remember. Mm -hmm. There was two emergency podcasts, and I, I just... I know, but I'm pretty sure you knew the first one was just like, yeah, go ahead and use that. Look, the emergency podcast, they just... They, they make me lackadaisical. If I needed to use a word, it would be lackadaisical. I... I Figured, well, we can use the There's two people podcast. in this relationship. I know. Listen. You can be lackadaisical all you want, but there's somebody else that has to pick up your slack, and that somebody is me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm Get this phrase into your head, my friend. <laughs> friend. Blood over hobby. Blood over hobby. It's been a very, very harsh winter. Very snowy. Um, I, I got a lot of... Now that my son's older, I'm going to pull the sun card. My oh, son. no. Yes. No, not other that. Sledding. There's been a lot of sledding. Uh, there's, you know, we've just been enjoying the snow, lots of it. And then there's really weird days where we had like 60 degree weather. Uh, you know, uh, which uh, he's old enough now to play with my Transformers, my my old toys, and mm -hmm. you know, build. Look, sorry, like I said, that's all. That's all I have to say. And outside of 
not alerting you to Sunday. When... Any other week. Apology is only egotism wrong side out. Hey, hey, hey. I, I wanted to have an extra long podcast today, but Owen's like, mm, I got other stuff to okay. do. Okay, no, no, no. He's like, a, yeah. No. He's like, I have no. more important nails to cut. Nails to cut. Okay, why are we, why am I, why didn't I agree <laughs> to the... <laughs> To the long podcast. Is it because we're recording it, then I've got to edit it the same day? Is it that? People are understanding. Somebody Don't. who just admitted that editing is something he does while he's playing video games. Yes, I'm a very talented person. I'm listening out, I'm editing, and I'm playing a game while I do it. Yes, I can't yes. play a fast-paced game, obviously. It's got to be more of a, a slow game, but... You can't yes. play a fast-paced game, period. <laughs> he actually stopped breathing. It's time to move on to a uh, Phil's lap story. <laughs> Are you shifting me? Are you transitioning me? Oh, Phil, what's this lap story I keep uh, hearing about? <laughs> How many times have you heard about it? All right. On that particular Sunday that I was supposed to rendezvous with Owen... I had some time in the morning to myself. Uh, some of you may know, some of you that have joined in our little movie sessions, um, I, I kind of want to LARP, live action role play. I just want to beat some people with a Nerf sword, drink beer in the woods around a campfire, uh, that sort of thing. And it's been really hard to find something. I, I thought there would be all these things online. Anyway, I, I went to a park. There was supposed to be a live action role playing event but the description was very vague and this place had two or three parking spots there was different pavilions I, I didn't know I didn't know where to go so I just thought alright nobody's contacting me back I'll just go up there see if I can find anybody you know I'll, I'll recognize LARPers right especially fantasy LARPers going down the path I see people <coughs> excuse me I see people they're in <laughs> what appears to be full regalia. I mean, they're they got bags, they got these these big hats, these multicolored cloaks, and they're acting funny. They're they're laughing this high pitch. They're they're moving around in the same area. They to me look like they were role playing. So I'm I'm getting ready all like to greet them like welcome travelers you know all larpy like and i realize in they're your just... peasant clothes you're gonna welcome them in a king's manner i, I realize they're just homeless people <laughs> <laughs> and I, I almost went right up to them i'm pretty sure they just got done shitting and that's why they were acting all funny moving around trying to cover their shit up <laughs> come back here partner Anyway, listener, I was all prepared to meet them with a well-met traveler. I'm like, oh, shit. Those aren't, like, multicolored robes. Those are fucking rags. And they're bags of recycles that they're going to trade in for booze. So I, I never found the LARPers. So I was just like, ah, oh, shit. And I had to go down. Like, I made a new trail. Like, I didn't even want to. I felt kind of bad about my actions. Just before they could totally see me, I just bust <laughs> off into the woods. <laughs> so that's that's my LARP story. You can tick it off on the little timeline there. <clears throat> oh, let me reel it on in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you were almost one with the homeless. <laughs> well met, traveler. Get away, <laughs> I'm shitting. <laughs> ah, absence makes the heart grow fonder, doesn't it, Owen? Shut up. Absence no. makes the heart grow stronger. <laughs> oh, really good. Gonna... Yes. Says oh. here you says here you have a poo question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I saw an image. The needs that. <laughs> I don't like where this is going. Reel it in. Now you got me using that phrase. 
No, I saw an image on the internet of a, a couple pooing. Okay, nothing wrong. <laughs> nothing wrong there. Wait, wait, you mean in the bedroom or a Sochi style? <laughs> no, so <coughs> Sochi style. Okay. And uh, I noticed that the man didn't drop his garments um, down to the floor. He kept them, you know, above the knee. So I wanted to ask you, hmm. when you are partaking in, you know, <laughs> dropping a fecal bomb, right. do you drop your knickers to your ankles or do you keep them above your knee uh well i guess at home all the way down to the ankles generally that's that's just where they go they fall <laughs> that way yeah um yeah yeah i think they're always all the way down to the ankles now that's very dangerous <laughs> because <laughs> well uh do you do you wipe standing up or sitting down <laughs> hey oh, we're going in we're going in people here's a little warning to tune out before you hear an answer I hover <laughs> what? I hover that has no relevancy to what I'm about to say but yeah, that's just uh, a peek into Phil's routine <laughs> he likes peeking on my routines so I always drop my knickers to my ankles whenever I poo as well for your neighbours to watch if I'm not mistaken <laughs> well, yeah they can get a good looking in but, you know, why would they? You know, I'm sure they've got better things to do than watch, uh, you know, me just go at it. So I think, I don't know, it was a couple of years ago, and uh, I, I was coming back from London. Coming back from London, not going to That's London. That's weird. So you were coming home. I, no, yes, I was coming home from London. To London. No, from London. You, and were on a, you were in transit. <laughs> in transit to my home, which is not London. Ish. <laughs> well, it's not, and um, you know, it's it's been a, a pretty iffy trip. You know, it is. I had torrential downpour, and I had to like change in the in the changing rooms or whatever. And it wasn't a nice experience. So I was down to my last uh, set of clean clothes. Okay, so I don't know. We're about two hours away from home, and we stop off at the services. I'm dying for a crap, and <laughs> I don't know why I didn't just use the the coach toilet, but I, I, I kind of feel wrong, because once you stand up and you start walking back, everybody starts looking at you, and they're like, oh, I know what you're doing. There's the shitter. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's not like a plane when there's, you know, hundreds of people there, and you could sort of, like, you know, say, oh, I wasn't, you know, the one that did that, but, you know, a coach, it's <laughs> very, very small. So, you know, if somebody else goes in there, they know who to blame. Very embarrassing. So, well, <laughs> well go ahead. No, 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 no. I was going to say, well, you know, if you know what you're doing, you shouldn't have to go pooing. I mean, <laughs> well, I, I didn't want to. But, all right. You know, I, I, I dropped one off at the hotel. Did you tell everybody that? Like, look, I'm sorry, I don't mean to shit in our transport, but I'm going to have to. Well, I, I really should have. So I, I went into the, the public oh dear, public Shitter. toilet. And, you know, I was quite drowsy because, you know, I had a long day or whatever. And I dropped my knickers and everything. I should stop calling them knickers. They're <laughs> yeah. My boxes and my uh, three-quarter length shorts or whatever. I dropped them down. Everything's going fine. You know, I got about five minutes before the coach leaves. So everything's fine. Uh, you know, stand up, wipe, wipe, flush, whatever. Go to pull up my trousers. To piss Every, on No. And I pull up my trousers <laughs> and everything. <laughs> Shut up. And then I start feeling this horrible wet patch behind both my uh, calves, okay? <laughs> and I look down, and there's somebody. I don't know who. <laughs> Sorry. That sound, there's somebody there. <laughs> so, so, no, somebody decided to piss on the floor. And not the toilet. So and as I dropped my, you know, everything, they actually, like a sponge, soaked everything up. You didn't notice a puddle of piss? No. <sighs> no what, what am I supposed this is to a I, shameful no, story. I you don't, should edit this out. No, I don't check, you know, because I, I... It's I, a public toilet. Yes, you should check everything. But it was a nice service station, or so I thought. So then I had to, you know, pull up everything, and... I just kept having, you know, when I got back on the coach, 
obviously when a coach stops, you go forward a little bit. So for the next two hours, because my trousers were wet, every time the coach just broke slightly, I would have them slap against my uh, my legs. Mm, did that give you erotic dreams? <laughs> <laughs> No, but I still live dangerously to this day <laughs> and drop my pants to my ankles no matter where I am. Yeah, well, don't you have, don't you, you got to curl your toes in and up. You've got to create the bridge <laughs> so that, you know, the, nothing ever touches. Plus, if you wear a belt, that creates a handle. I don't and wear a just, belt. Well, be a man, wear a belt. Be a man, no. And <laughs> be a man, he says. Far no. to that. Far, I tell you. So this is just a public service announcement to always check pissy bathroom floors. <laughs> if you needed to know that, if this is the first that you've been no. advised no. to that, no, you can then go welcome. To the, no. Because the puddle go, of absurdity. You could go to the nicest hotel, but there's some asshole that will just spray everywhere. And like me, I thought, oh, this looks like a nice place. If I go into a public bathroom, I make sure that I'm not walking in shit or piss. That's all. Well, for all I know, okay, it could have been dry, but the, the person next to me could have whizzed under the door. This makes me sad. This makes me sad. Lib. What? Lib. Lib? <laughs> Sad lib. Yes, I know. I was hoping that you'd carry that on a little. Yes, Sad Lib, the next in our series of maybe it will appear again segments, maybe it will fade into constant obscurity as most of our segments do. What an embarrassing story, eh? <laughs> People are going to know me as Pissy Pants Chamberlain. <laughs> The prophecies have been fulfilled. All right. If you're familiar with Mad Libs, then you'll be familiar with Sad Libs. True story. When I thought of Sad Libs, I thought, oh, this is going to be great. I can't wait to spring this on people. Let me just check online. Oh, no. Nope. Everybody else has thought of Sad Libs. So, with that in mind, I stole a popular one. A Mad Lib is when you ask your partner, in this case, Owen... To, <laughs> to fill out some words to a story. However, he doesn't know the story. I'm just going to ask him for some nouns, some names, things like that. And then I will read the story with hilarious results. Okay, the catch here is that it's a sad lib. Mad libs are supposed to be wild and wacky fun. Sad libs, not so fun. Are you ready, Owen? Yes. I am ready. Name a celebrity. Any celebrity. Uh, Vanilla Ice. Okay. <clears throat> this is going to be great, I can tell. Uh, well, I almost just started reading this. A number. <laughs> 69. How predictable. A president. It uh, doesn't say specifically, it just says president. Nixon. <laughs> That's what he does, isn't it? person that you'll admit to loving the most <laughs> myself <laughs> it's gonna be weird oh, let's see again do, 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 do. a utensil um a ruler A verb ending in ed, an adverb. An ad adverb or a verb? Sorry, a verb ending in ed. Like, uh. <laughs> that's embarrassing. <laughs> uh, answered. Answered, okay. <laughs> uh, a chain restaurant that you do not like. Oh, oh! I can slam them. Um, <laughs> That's gonna be ironic. I mean, go ahead. Wimpy. Uh, oh, Wimpy. That's a. F I forgot their name. Yeah, they're like Wimpy. a struggling burger joint. You only see them in like the darkest corners of humanity. <laughs> so Wimpy's. Wimpy, yeah. All right. 
and a person you've been hoping to reconnect with? Uh, ooh. Excuse us. <laughs> uh, the fat boy. Okay. Well, he's going to be soiling his diapers. Are you ready? I'm very excited to see how this turns out. <laughs> the title of this, which I stole from collegehumor.com, is There Has Been an Accident and a Celebrity is Hurt. This Sunday afternoon, Vanilla Ice was hospitalized after his car careened off of highway number 69 in Nixon County Sunday afternoon, killing Owen. <laughs> The State Highway Patrol says Owen died when the Nissan Altima Vanilla Ice was driving failed to negotiate a ruler in the road. <laughs> Armored in, er, sorry, answered into the air and hit a tree. <laughs> answered into the air. Well, what can you do? The accident happened near Wimpy's at about 4 p.m. Another victim, Fat Boy, died in the <laughs> hospital an hour later. Yes! <laughs> Double kill. <laughs> So not only did you manage to destroy yourself in our little sad lib, you took down a listener, a friend of the podcast. Thank goodness. I've done the <laughs> word a <of> favor. <laughs> well, that couldn't have gone any better. I don't know why we're all laughing, because it's sad. All right? You people disgust me. I don't know why I hang around with you. <laughs> I don't know if you're telling the truth or not. There's one thing that I think would help, that would help everybody right now in their time of need. And that would be to hear from somebody that's never, ever listened to the podcast before. Answer some would you rather questions. I feel kind of bad for the people that asked to be in them. And <laughs> we're like, no. We apologize if we haven't gotten back to you. We're still trying to, to work that out. So... We went with a wild card and one of Owen's chums. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Damn. His name's Jacob. Would you care uh, to introduce yourself in any way? Do you have anything exciting to state about yourself? I have my own theme song. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm curious. I, I don't have a theme song. Oh, Sorry. well, geez. I know you're just joking, but I can't help but feel a little let down. Yeah, no, I'm a bit let down. Owen, what would his theme song be if you could apply any song? <laughs> Lazy Town, cooking for <laughs> <out> the book. <laughs> All right. He's got a messy personality, but boy, is he delicious. <laughs> uh, yes, as listeners may take note, I think these guys know each other. <laughs> I want to say that. Intimately. <laughs> we shared the same room naked yes. together a few times. But... Jacob I nervously... Oh. <laughs> Jacob nervously flicks his Zippo. That's, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Just lots of nervous laughter. Yes. All right, well... Please leave me alone. <laughs> have, leave you alone? We're about to ask you questions that will make your soul cross paths with our souls. Yeah. No, I've been... Uh... I've been told that. Yes. All right. We're going to start off easy. I don't know why, but we are. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Oh, and this is a brand new one, so I want you to pay attention as well. No, shizen. Jacob, would you rather be four foot five or be seven foot seven? Very specific heights here. That is very well, I can't even say it. Specific. <laughs> yeah. Boy, I hope you don't ever find a genie. I'm like, uh, what's your wish? <laughs> <laughs> well, fair enough. <laughs> Granted, you are now a fart. <laughs> um, I wouldn't want to be as tall as a lamppost. Okay, good, good call. So, I guess. I guess. I guess I'd be a rather small person. Yeah, that might hinder. Do you like amusement parks? Actually, no, I won't be able to, yeah, yeah, but I don't really go to amusement parks to be fair. To be fair. So mm -hmm. yeah, no, I'll stick with I'll, I'll stick with the small person. 
So you realize when you become a smaller person, you know, proportionately, you might lose a few inches, you know, down <laughs> there on your feet. That doesn't that doesn't bother you any? Um, well, now come now you come to mention that. Yes, yes, you weren't thinking that's, ahead. That is a big changer, isn't it? Actually, Ooh. yeah. No, screw it. I'll be a lamppost. <laughs> okay, lamppost with a big dick. All right. <laughs> Owen, would you care to chime in on pluses and minuses? Um, well... I mean, this is essentially tall versus short, if you think about it. Don't think about it. Nobody wants to be short, let's face it. If you're, if you're short, then you know, it definitely sucks to be you. Uh, you're half a person. So I would definitely go for the tall, just uh, not just to look cool, but also for the annoying factor that uh, it doesn't matter wherever I sit in a concert or stand in a concert, I'm always going to get the best uh, best view. And I can always annoy the person behind me, which is always great fun. So definitely tall. Yeah, but then you then you stand out whenever there's something <laughs> wrong. Or <you're> like, quick, <laughs> yeah, quick but who's, who's going to start on you if you're that tall? You just yeah, but that doesn't them mean, out of the way. Just because you're seven foot seven doesn't mean you're going to be physically but, fit. You could just be tall and stupid. If you're that tall, mind. Yeah, but I'm just assuming I'm just going to grow. <laughs> that you'll just hold their head with one hand, like, 18 feet away, and they'll be swinging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm fighting you, am I? <laughs> uh, that's me. That's got a little extra consonant at the beginning. All right. Interesting. Mild question. Mild question. Now. It's mild question. Then I dread to think what's around the corner. Would you rather, Jacob, if you were forced to pick one as a curse, would you rather sweat nasty mayonnaise, day-old mayonnaise, <laughs> every time you perspire, you pump out mayo, or every time you have to take a shit, a softball-sized poop comes out? I'm going with the softball-sized <laughs> poop. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't take too long. Anal stimulator. <laughs> I just, uh, it depends what kind of brand of mayonnaise it is. Really? <laughs> Nasty old mayo. Then definitely the, the, the softball okay, fucking. Yeah. Like not, not edible. You couldn't work at like a sandwich shop. No, yeah, well. And then they don't. just rub the bread all over you. Sexy. No, you're you're going to put me off mayonnaise. Oh, well. Everybody should be put off mayonnaise. It's a condiment of the devil, Owen. <laughs> I too would go for the big poops, mainly for a defensive measure. <laughs> <laughs> you can I thought you hit someone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wow! All you need is somebody to poop a bat, and you got a game. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's a common fact that when you're scared, you know, you need to empty everything. Well, so if you're alone somewhere, you don't have a weapon, you're scared, you pop, you know, you poop something out as a weapon, you could throw it, they're disgusted, they don't know what's going on. And, Sorry, uh, so a softball-sized poop to you is a weapon? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's your defensive countermeasure. It's always good. <laughs> Give it some time, you know. <laughs> But it's always good to be prepared. And this is just another arsenal in being prepared, but not overly prepared. All right. Let's like say you. you're on a hot date. Okay. <laughs> and then you feel the urge. You're like, oh, thank God I didn't order the mayo. But, <laughs> excuse me, I have to pass a softball. <laughs> but then that that's just a party <laughs> trick. You can say, oh, do you want to come into the bedroom? I can show you something. <laughs> Tearing your anus is a party trick. Okay. Oh, that's cool. I'd hate to be the coroner when you die, mind. And <laughs> to evacuate your bowels and just be like five or six softball poops. All right. So there's no love for mayo is what I'm getting here. All right. Well, interesting. Interesting. Now, I think is the favorite, would you rather, the one that is the most common. Jacob, would you rather not have sex with a goat and have everyone think you had sex with a goat or have sex with that goat but no one will ever find out 
<laughs> this is this is a tough one. Oh, for some. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck would you do? Well, oh, and you hasn't listened to the podcast. Yeah, oh, and you've you've answered this in numerous ways. What are you feeling today? Oh, I'm still up for a bit of goat. <laughs> Got it? Still up? Always time for goat. Yeah. Well, we are no. We already know Owen is unabashedly. Well, he's unabashed. Fuck goats here. Fuck goats there. Here a goat. There a goat. Everywhere a goat. Goat. Jacob, do you have such loose scruples and? Disease testicles is that you would be <laughs> with any goat whatsoever? I, I, you know, what? I'd probably go with the go with the not have sex with a goat, but people think that I have. So, yeah, so no satisfaction. It does goats don't do it for me. What, what? Have <laughs> you had don't do sex it for me either. with a goat? <laughs> Don't take too long to answer that because I'm recording this. Well, what was it? What was the question? Oh, sure, sure, man. Have you ever had sex with a goat? Doesn't matter what you do. I'm going to put an insanely long pause here. No. <laughs> okay. So, neither have I. Let's be fair. Neither um, have I. All right. Well, I couldn't make that assumption for you. <laughs> So if you've never had sex with a goat, how can you say it doesn't doesn't do it for you? But it just oh, uh, it just that's speciesist. You're just you're conforming to society's like norms. Well, I don't I don't see a goat and I go oh oh I'd like to give give that give that goat a good pork and I would. You know, it's just you know. Oh, and uh, find this man a goat. Where's the closest <laughs> goat? And then just see if he gets an erection and report back to us. <laughs> <laughs> Go to a farm and stare at his cock. That's all we're asking you to do. No. <laughs> Man, I hope you two guys never see a goat from this point forward because you will be haunted by this conversation. <laughs> Go to a Halloween party is dressed as a goat. <laughs> no, we're not having a Halloween party. <laughs> what if uh, what if you were forced to wear a goat costume, a two man goat costume? Who would be the front? Help me. <laughs> Re oh, really? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> really? <laughs> Great. He didn't waste any time calling that. Uh, no. Delightful. Well, this has been a very interesting exploration into the mind of a human. Do you have anything you'd like to add, Jacob? Anything in your defense? Not that you're, you know, you should be on the defensive, but well, well, let's talk exactly a goat fucking. <laughs> what am I defending? <laughs> Your answers in case somebody challenges them. Well, fuck whoever challenges them. All right. Well, you're a good sport. And uh, as far as I know, you don't have anything you'd like to push or promote or anything like that. No. Anything to say? No. Any religious messages? Good <laughs> for <laughs> Take a burr. Apparently, does not get excited over the thought of ramming hmm. a goat. Nice play on words. Which I find to be quite dubious. Personally, I think Jacob is the man to uh, jump ass first into anything. <laughs> well, that implies that the goat would have to be facing well no logistics are entering my mind now that should not be there can we advance Quick. what's over in the corner it's a segue dun, it's, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's owen versus phil <gasps> Ooh. big stuff going on in the owen versus <laughs> phil world big stuff uh we've gotten a few more emails oh it's still tipping Either way, um, I I feel weird because I feel like people are ignoring the fact that the you know we're supposed to be separate but equal. 
Oh, and I. We are our own entities, but in this scenario, you we... You can't live up to me. That's, that's, that's why. All right, they well, can't uh, hold you as an equal. Zing! James, James let us know that he would rather be with me <laughs> because Owen would try to do something crazy. Oh, wait, quick reminder. It's who would you want to be your tandem parachuter? You've never jumped out of an airplane before, and in order to win a million dollars, you have to jump out of an airplane no training, no experience, just the person on your back. You have to pick. Who's it going to be, Owen or Phil? James picked Phil because Owen would try to do something crazy and I would end up dead with my brain all over the ground and blood everywhere. Phil would be calm and collected and be reassuring, unlike You're, Owen. How do you know? Has anybody seen me in a, an emergency situation? I'm great. Hmm. What was the last emergency that you dealt with? Um, I, my <laughs> if I had to parachute with a person, <laughs> says Trace, if it he had to parachute, power extensions, they, yes. they blew and I had to go and get a new one. But I did so calmly and collectively. Trace says, if I had to parachute with a person, it would be Phil. Sorry, Owen, but I have to go with a man who is older and will take my life more seriously. You don't know that. I would He's totally got nothing take, to live I would, for I at his take, age. I <laughs> would take his life seriously, whereas you would just touch him in the air. I believe somebody voiced that as one of their fears, that you're a known pervert. <laughs> who was that? I, I, don't like, I don't like this slander. It's not slander, although you should be being slanderized because you messed up in your fill-in-the-blank challenge. So somebody slandered you. you. You can talk about some, the, the some email. You find out your email that you would like to read now because I'm going to find the <coughs> one where you get slandered. Fill-in-the-blank is the headline game, and that's you've got it all messed up. But we did have some lovely emails. Um, Joshua J says that wallets are th theoretically useless, so Phil wins. Yes. Although apparently I did make some good points. And he, uh, like another dude, also found this podcast randomly. So that's pretty neat. We're spreading. <laughs> like, like a disease. Speaking of disease and spreading, Emily has um, some fetish uh, news. She says the weirdest fetish I've heard is when someone sleeps with a person who has AIDS in an like effort... How, I don't like how you chuckled right before that. <laughs> ...to contract the disease. The people who have this fetish are called bug chasers. And most of these people are set, sex addicts who cannot get turned on through less risky behaviors. Well, that's depressing. So that, that's pretty neat. Uh, Drake, or was that Trace? Who cares? Uh, he sent in a number of stuff. Something that stood out to me, at least, was he asked if we did prank calls. And we've done quite, well, I wouldn't say a f quite a few. We've done well, a good the, number. As far as they've heard, though. Well, you got to remember that part. Because there's stuff we do, but then we just do it for our own <laughs> shits and giggles. Well, that's true. There is some in the podcast. And I think you can find a pizza one. two or three on Phil's channel. Oh. Oh. Which is Rosh Rach Redemption. <laughs> oh, look, another email saying that, oh, no, wait, they'd want to be with you. Oh, sorry, <laughs> continue with whatever you were doing. This email does not exist. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, oh, also, I should say, Emily has uh, her roommate offered to crochet a coin purse for me. Oh, and yeah, she said she would even sew, sew my name on it. So <laughs> that would be nice. I will take it. And she also turned 19 last month, so hooray. Oh, Christ, that was loud. Um, Jack P, uh, he agrees with me that Philandra would be a good segment. Now, I think if we can get enough steam, I feel, I, I feel Ooh. Phil, <laughs> I feel Phil could crumble. So, I, I can tell you a story right now that will be the closest ever that you will get ever to a philanderer story, and it'll be the only thing to satisfy. He's, oh, well, I, I would love to hear it. But there are again. a disturbing number of people in the emails. There are three different people. They're like, I love philanderer as a segment. Make it happen. Yes. We're, we're picking up what steam. What the fuck, people? What the fuck? 
Pick up Steam and we can force him to do this. <laughs> well, no, you can. Yes, we can. Keep the dream alive. Uh, Again, this is the closest. Uh, was at my uh, a hospital, my friend and his wife. They were having a baby. Uh, we went up there, me and my wife, to visit them. This was a couple of years ago before we had a child. And when we were up there, my friend's sister, who I hadn't seen in a long time, and I had a big crush on many, 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 many years ago, she showed up. And I, she showed up with her, she wasn't married, she showed up with her boyfriend. And I was just kind of like, hey, when she showed up and I was talking to her. Little puppy love, innocent puppy love was what innocent. I was experiencing. Little flashbacks to that puppy love and I must have been talking to her two or three minutes before my wife was like yes and I'm his wife <laughs> like oh my oh, look. oh yes this old crow oh oh <laughs> damn it's, it's okay she doesn't listen to the podcast I know. I'm safe. <laughs> I don't have to defend her honor she'll never <laughs> know it was slandered uh, uh, Jack also Wants to know how your belly button is feeling. So it's time for feeling feel. really weird the way you said that <laughs> Phil hmm. how is your belly button any filled with lint my belly button is filled with lint and uh, well great lastly in Jack's email he said <laughs> Jack seems to actually dislike the uh, fill in the blank by calling it fill in the bland <laughs> I truly think that that that's a Typo. <laughs> I don't think it is. I think it's fill in the bland. No, no, it can't be. Real fast, uh, we're always interested in your opinions. We have gone pretty far without mentioning the email address. Owen? And yet we go further without <laughs> the email address. They know where to reach us. Contact at Wave of Absurdity. Dot com. That's contact at waveofobsidity.com. Uh, quick mentions, Raphael had some weird dream. I'm sure we'll read that out in a future episode. I've got a feeling we could have some dream talk coming up in future episodes. And um, next episode, look forward to a Aaron R segment. If you know who Aaron is, he does the most deliciously formatted emails. And he deserves his own segment, so look forward to that next week. Have you found the email <laughs> you're looking for? Uh, yes, I have, and I feel like you just put a lot of pressure on Aaron if he ever wants to email in again. No pressure, <laughs> Aaron. Well, yeah, if he doesn't email in, then, yeah, the segment's ruined. But <laughs> I know. Oh, Owen will have to masturbate to something else. I do want to uh, really quickly tell people the new Owen versus Phil that we kind of glossed over. Uh, this is the scenario that you have to choose which person Owen the perverted man from London I'm or Phil the upstanding father of the year <laughs> from the USA <laughs> what now, is this bullshit I'm going to start choking soon here is the scenario you the listener are trapped in a room with whichever one of us you picked <laughs> you are trapped in a room with a chain wrapped around connected to your leg wrapped around a pole connected to Owen or my leg Okay, now the building's burning. You need to get out. <laughs> you have a saw, but the saw can only cut through flesh. It's a magic saw, so don't email in about what you would do. You have to cut your leg off or the person you're with, in this case, Owen or Phil. How would you react in the situation? Who would you want to be with in order to guarantee your survival? Let us know. Email in, because I think a lot of the, uh, the listeners, Owen, I think they're noticing that if they get... Um, one sideish in their emails. They like provoking us. <laughs> they like provoking us. For instance, Josh here talking <laughs> about his fall from the airplane. There's uh, there's some pros. He he chose you foolishly. 
He chose you. Foolishly. It's a good choice. We could talk about PC games. Yeah. That's his number one, too. He has has that Londoner accent. Wow. Three. He is a Londoner, so I can ask him about London. Plymouthian. Yeah, see? They know. They know what buttons to push. So, yeah, he also says you can rap. Um, I can understand he has less to talk about with me. No offense. None taken. So, uh, yeah. And he goes on to say, even though you're a sexual deviant, (laughs) that he would still pick you. Well. Owen motherfucking Chamberlain, as he states. So, yes, we love these emails. Please keep sending them in. Contact. (laughs) Tune. Contacts at waveofobscenity.com. It is now time for the feature of features. It's time for Master Debater. Oh! <laughs> Good. Good. Now, it's been a while since we added to the pot for the massive prize. Usually Master Debater is sponsored, but that didn't work out too well, did it? I you think know? it worked out quite well. Well, yes, that's not to... I'm sorry, that's not to slander the people that, that chipped in. It is most appreciated. Um, just going to throw 10 American dollars in there. Maybe again, I don't know. There's a little problem in that I'm not sure if I already did this due to the secret hidden half episode possibly to be released later where Owen and I got into a little tiff so 10 US dollars I can mail you a 10 dollar bill in a birthday card that's part of the prize or you can take it and take take the uh, the currency transition hit so throwing that in there with a bunch of other steam game prizes all right Okay, we all know how Master Debater works. I'm not even going to bother explaining. If you're new, I'm very sorry, but you'll catch on pretty quick. I believe in you. Uh, if you listen this far, then you're obviously interested in what we have to say. Wait. So, the Master Debater for three weeks ago... A lot more time to vote. <laughs> oh, when they did. Was wallet versus card holder. Now... This was a landslide victory for one of us. One of us got 41 votes, Mm. while the other got 11. Mm. That's a massive 30 difference right there. A lot of votes. That's a a lot of votes. Thank you for voting. So, (laughs) the winner of that master debater is... Can I have a drum roll? Uh, You're the editor. (laughs) Just give me a finger roll or something. That's a click. Is me with 41 votes. The people are with me. Oh. Whoever said wallets are theoretical, well, obviously not. The masses what? are in my favor. I, they I, agree. I admit I didn't argue that well. And there are actually some emails that touched upon some good points for wallets themselves in that they do protect your money physically. Uh, there were some people that accused me of trying to flash my cash. I assure you, I've got not really anything to flash there. So, <laughs> tell me about it. We've also gotten uh, quite a few votes on what to do next. <laughs> we need to really update that list because. <sighs> what are we well, doing? So today's <laughs> today's master debate is soup versus salad as a meal starter. For the people. It's a podcast by the people, for the people. Uh, we all know how this works. Phil is odd. I am even. I go on Randall.org. I generate and we decide who Wait, goes Wait, I'm who. odd? Oh, God, here we go. All right, 86. I don't think so that's right. me. I am really indifferent, so I do not really care. I am going to extend a courtesy branch. And even though I won the role, I'm going to say, hey, Phil, you choose. Hey, Owen, go fuck yourself. Pick one. Try to be nice and look where that got me. I will go for a soup. 
Yeah. All right, you're going for yeah, right. Um, don't don't ever do that. Sorry. And uh, I would generate again, same premise, but uh, whoever wins gets to choose who goes first. Ninety-five. Well, well, well. I <laughs> will go surprisingly. Excuse me. I will go surprisingly. Second. First. Mm-hmm. Now, one minute and thirty. Soup. Soup is for children. You want... Uh, let me just drink my meal, okay? No. Salad is the civilized way to go. Get your fiber. Get your low nutrient leaves, but, you know, there's a... They're very high in fiber. It's very satisfying. Whereas soup, what well, soup is... Soup is full of sodium. Yes? It's, uh... Grasp a straw, sir. No, no. Soup. Soup is high in sodium. Yes, because of the preservatives. High in sodium, and uh, there's generally a lot of fat and calories. Oh, you know what? Go get, go get a thing of soup. Go look at it. I bet you one can of soup is two servings. There's going to be two servings. So, automatically, they trick you. You're like, oh, I'm going to have a can of soup. Boom. You just had two servings of food. All right. Salads. They are high. You can you can control what's in your salad. You get soup. You know, it's like the, you can't separate the cream out of the soup, that sort of thing. Salad, it can just be lettuce. It can be, you can put in tomatoes. You can put in nutrient-rich vegetables, all right? A very satisfying meal, okay? Very satisfying. And I think the ability to craft your salad on the spot fresh Absolutely wonderful. I would take my time now. Okay, so it feels like, oh, salad, salad, salad. Okay, you can get well, a lot I'm of, supposed to be that way. You can get a lot of your stuff with veggie soup, okay? You know, there are alternatives, so don't just go for him because of that stupid argument. Now, what is salad? Okay, let's think about it. Let's also think, if you were horribly disabled, that you could only eat food through a straw. What is more convenient, a bowl of salad or the all-inclusive, delicious soup? Hmm. Soup is the all-inclusive food for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're horribly disabled, disfigured or whatnot. You can have it. It's great. It's bonding. Everybody at the meal table can now eat because of this wonderful, wonderful food. Who's grasping at straws now? You. Uh... Let's also deal with the, you know, salad can be exotic. You're getting leaves from God knows where. What's that? You're biting into your salad. Oh, no. You've got a bit of frog in your mouth. Absolutely disgusting. With the, the soup, soup is classic. Why is it a classic? I tell you. Ow. <laughs> I'll tell you why it's a classic. Because the old fly in the soup joke. You could bring a plastic fly, put it in your soup, and go, look, everybody, the waiter, there's a fly in my soup. Instant comedy. And you're just going to let those seconds slide. That's cool. You, I will take I my minute my and 30 I... <laughs> now. Did you just hear my opponent? I mean, seriously, he went to fly in the soup routine. I'm I'm sorry. Frog in the mouth. Oops, there's a frog in the mouth. He had nothing, nothing to say. I go back and listen to it. I urge you go back and listen to the nothing that just went on. I have even more to further oh, my yeah. cause. Ignore the disabled, Phil, with your salad. Chewing. You have to chew a lot to eat a salad. It's just that simple. Chewing is the first task for any form of healthy digestion. All right. That's all. The people that can't chew. All right. Well, then, yeah, their options are limited, but this is master debater, okay? The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, all right? Star Trek, baby. All right? Fiber. I can't jump back to that enough. Fiber, fiber, fiber. Now, sure, you can get some, I guess, high-density soups or whatever, but who's making their own soups? Am I right? You're not... Uh, you generally, if you're having soup, you're having it at a restaurant or out of a can, and you don't have that control of making a soup. Whereas a salad, easy enough to prepare, cheap ingredients, boom, you have a healthy meal. 
that roughage, baby, that roughage. Not, oh, oh there's a frog and my salad, there's a fly in my soup. The <laughs> Comedy. most ridiculous argument in the history of Master <laughs> Debater. I leave yeah, you take my in time his now. capable hands. So, he, 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 for some reason it seems that he thinks I haven't made any points. <laughs> I <laughs> Shut up. I don't understand how I, I, I made the point that it's all-inclusive, and how could he say that's not a point? I don't understand. But enough about him. There are, are huge about? varieties of flavor, okay? With a salad, you know what it's going to taste like. Basically, water. That's what it tastes like. You shove a bit of lettuce in your mouth. Mm, mm. Oh, what is this? This is so bland. This is so disgusting. I would love a bit of soup to dip in my lettuce because it's that bland. Salad is bland. Why are people fat? Because they don't like the taste of salad or it's glandular, you know? It's a known fact, so why on earth would you go for the less tasty? The, it's a fact, less tasty of the two. It seems absurd to me, especially, with, like I said, with the huge flavors you can get. It, it makes a lot of sense. Excite your palate. You're like, mm, mm, what is that? Mm, mm, mm. It's, it's, instead with a, a freaking tomato, you stick that in your mouth. You know what you're going to get. You bite, you squeeze a bit of tomato juice that flies across the table, hits your uncle on the, you know, in his new shirt. That's ruined, thanks to you, dickhead. All could have been avoided. All could have been avoided if you went the soup route. Now, you could also make your soup at home, which is a great thing to do. It's fun for the whole family to do. It's something that's inclusive once again. All right, I forget the amount, the final amount of time. What do I have? Six minutes. Seconds? A minute. All right. Well, you, uh, I'll take it now. <laughs> uh, my opponent is trying to win you over with his little references to with slapstick facts. humor, with no facts. All right, the flavor with issue. Facts. You could easily, you could easily take your salad and add some fresh tomatoes that you cut. Previous to putting it in fresh tomatoes, I should cut some cucumbers in a restaurant, some breadcrumbs, some in a walnut and onion, in some hickory walnut sauce. You can make a salad very a tasty. The taste argument is foolish. In a okay? restaurant, again, he hasn't pointed out any nutritional pluses or minuses. He hasn't countermanded. In a restaurant, he hasn't. He's trying to interrupt me. He has not addressed the sodium issue at all. He's just all over the place with his little jokes. It is clearly in the forum of Master Debater, I who have triumphed here in my description of why salad is better than soup. You've got fiber, you've got roughage, you've got less sodium, time, more control time, over time, your time, food. Time, time. <clears throat> I will take my minute Suck now. It. I will address this sodium. Why? Why? Is that it? Is sodium, that it? Why? Why? Sodium. Okay, that's <laughs> ad addressed. Again, he's talking about things that you can't get at a restaurant. I don't understand this. What? What I've done is I've given you examples of why soup is great, because it's inclusive, because it's tasty, because it does so much more. Soup does what salad can't. Okay? Oh, shit. That's my phone. <laughs> soup does what salad can't, and that's excite your palate. It's delicious. It's great. You could take the soup home. You can't take a salad home. What are you going to do? It's disgusting. It's going to go off a lot quicker. You bring some nice soup home from the restaurant, be like, oh, I'll taste this. I had, oh, it's lovely. Oh, what, what, you know, that was a starter. Oh, yeah, I'll go over there. Nobody takes salad home. Why? Because it's utterly fucking pointless. Excite your palate. Be with me, my friends. Be all inclusive. Be in the soup family. Soup does what Sally can't. Hail Hitler. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't start my timer, so beep, 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 beep. All right. When you go to vote for me, make sure you take note of what the votes for the last Master Debater before the mid-season break is. I don't know what the options will be. We'll have to think of some. But, yes, don't feel bad for not voting for Phil again. It's okay. Uh -oh. I cannot, <laughs> this is your worst Master Debater to date. You are I as bad as I was on Wallets. I certainly don't think so. I think I made some great points. Let's play another game that you suck at called Fill in the Blank. Fill in the Bland. That's not a typo. <clears throat> or it is a typo. I thought it was caught acting poorly. No, you slut. 
<laughs> oh no wait that is there yes sorry caught acting poorly is next <laughs> you're just gonna call me a slut so wait no caught acting wait then what's oh yeah no the editing challenge no fill in the blank is before caught acting poorly yeah fill in the blank is before caught acting poorly Except took out your the editing challenge and that's where fill in the blank is it's not fill in the blank is the headline game I don't have headlines. I have fill in the blanks. You've got to fill in the <laughs> it's blanks. Not fill in the blank. What? Because I'm not the one filling in the blank. Yes, fill, fill in All the right, blank. Then we'll just call it wise and otherwise. The Owen version of fill in the blank. Owen has to guess. <laughs> Owen has to guess. It's getting nasty now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read the first half of a saying, and Owen has to guess. What the second half is, I'm going to read two. One is the correct answer, and the other is one that I made up. Last time, I went did dismally. This time, he shall do the same. There's only three. I don't think he'll get any of them right. There is an old Polish saying. The naked will always... The naked will always... No, here's your option. The naked will always feel the wind, or the naked will always meet those who have no clothes. Well, Old Polish saying. I always feel the wind. The and I'm not naked. Okay, so the naked will always feel the wind is the saying or not the saying? No. I'm getting rid of it. Get out of here. So feel the wind is out for what? Tell me which one you're picking. The second one. The second one as the real one or as the one? Tell me as which the, one. As the real one. So Polish saying the naked will always meet those who have no clothes is the <laughs> correct saying. Yes, it sounds utterly stupid, but I'm, I'm sticking to my convictions. It is, in fact, correct. That is the correct saying. Number oh, two. I was do party. Number two. <laughs> There's an old Persian saying, I'll let go of the bladder. I'll let go of the bladder. I'll let go of the bladder when it is empty, or I will let go of the bladder, but the bladder won't let go of me. <laughs> an well, old Persian saying. That's stupid. <laughs> what? Which one? Be more specific with your when, criticisms. When he won't let go of me. I'll let go of the bladder, but he won't let go of me is the real one. So there's That's an old so Persian stupid. saying, I'll let go of the bladder, but the bladder won't let go of me. <laughs> yes. You're picking that one. Yeah. That is the correct one. <laughs> well, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, I guess if you know, let us know, people. I'll let go of the bladder, but the bladder won't let go of me. Let go of me. You, you will have to let the bladder go. You always have to pee. The pee is in control of you. That's what that's what I get out of it. So that when you have to pee, next time you have to pee and somebody's like, really? You have to go now? You go, I'll let go of the bladder, but the bladder won't let go of me. All right, last one. There's an old Italian saying. <coughs> Will Owen get three for three, destroying my say, destroying <laughs> my prediction out of the water, or will he fail? If If I do, will you just quit this segment? I agree to nothing. <laughs> oh. All right, all right, no, no, we'll raise the stakes. Let me, let me see. Okay. Yes, I agree to these terms. Oh, what? Sorry, didn't mean to yell there. What but I agree to these terms. What, what terms do I have? Any? Well, no. If you get this one right, if you, if you knock this one out of the park, I will not do this anymore. So much emphasis on the park. I wouldn't have anything to do with the park. So, unless people are like, hey, I kind of like this, then I think you should acquiesce. But for now, if you get this right, I will do as you ask and no longer try to push it in the podcast. I'd rather you just not call me a whore all the time. Whore! Answer this question. Sorry, I didn't mean oh. to yell again. There's an old Italian saying, he who has a bad tongue, that's the first part, he who has a bad tongue should have good loins <laughs> he who has a bad tongue should have good loins or he who has a bad tongue eats very carefully 
has loins is the right one there is an old Italian saying he who has a bad tongue should have good loins is the answer for the correct one uh yeah I, you are I, correct <laughs> okay feature so. destroy <laughs> I think I, I cocked on cock pretty early on because mm. your ones were always sensible. <laughs> but the other ones mm. just seemed very absurd. Well, there you go. Perfect for this podcast. Oh, Eric's going to do so pity. Well, look at you. A sore winner. That's a home run. Right. Do, you want, do you want the fourth one that I took out because I thought it would be too hard? No. And just for shits and giggles, we'll change nothing about our little agreement. No, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. Watch yeah. these both be wrong. These, uh, this will just prove that you're a whore. <coughs> How about that? If you no. get it wrong, you're a whore. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, if I get it right, you're then a you're slut. not a whore. All right. I agree. Okay. There's an old Japanese saying: Every man has a habit. Where every man has a secret. Now, as you see here, it's very <laughs> difficult. It's only one word. It could be either. <laughs> Habit or secret. Habit is the real one. Habit is the real one, you slut. <laughs> yes, you are a slut. I did it. Uh, <laughs> oh, I made Phil shitty games. <laughs> I did it. Fuck you, Phil. <laughs> Whoa there. <laughs> Don't go through puberty on my account. <laughs> Fuck you. I wish I was LARPing with homeless people. <laughs> oh, man, that feels good. It feels good to... I to challenge to you again! <laughs> <laughs> it feels good to finally shut you down. This is a challenge. You know what? I don't want to talk to Owen yeah, anymore. Not Owen only did I shut room. you down, I Owen can leave the room. on you. I summon O'Neill. <laughs> What, what the hell are you doing? You can't just. No. I'm summoning O'Neill. He doesn't. He doesn't. Uh, what? No. Stop trying to segue. I. I beat you, and then I stomped on you, and I crushed every part of you. You are a slut. If you may continue. If you slut. want to hear more of the uh, fill in the blank segment, or as <laughs> Owen likes to call it, wise and otherwise. <laughs> fill in the bland. Fill in the bland. Contact at Wave of Absurdity at Hotmail.com. It's the O'Neill Challenge! What? <laughs> As many of you know, O'Neill is stupid and is not <laughs> here to defend himself. That's not nice. He's some sort of Londoner that thinks he's, he has he's an Irish, Irish accent. He's from, Deb he's from Dublin. <laughs> That's where Dublin. he's from. All right, well... I have a challenge for him, should he ever care to appear. But I think he's chicken. Okay. He's cowardly. So well, What's the challenge? The challenge is a... Uh, is a it can be a limerick off or it can be a tongue twister off. We, we, <laughs> we agree on a tongue twister and we'll let the people decide if I do a better accent than uh, O'Neill... And get through accent. the tongue twister. Whoever gets through the tongue twister, we'll just let them decide the merits. I know some people love O'Neill, but I don't want to vote for the love of O'Neill. I just want to see if he can get through a tongue twister if he's so good. Okay. Good. So, Phil, you've given me <laughs> a three-word, well, not a three-word, a three-sentence um, tongue twister, and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven from me. Let's nope, just, six. I lied. Let's just hear how you do. Okay, well, let, <coughs> let me just go get... No. <coughs> no. Don't wait, are you? Oh, hello, Terrafil. Fuck off, O'Neill. Read that. How you doing, Terrafil? Fucking you do off. Do want to tell me how you doing there. No. I'm fucking you I'm off. a sheet slitter. I slit sheets. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Terrafil? Try again. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm a sheet slitter. I slit sheets. I'm the sleekest sheet slitter that yes! ever slit sheets. <laughs> Schlitter, eh? Schlitter? Do you make fun of my accent, sir? Uh, you? What are you, a Spanish-Irish person? 
What are you on about there, you silly boy? Toy, I bought a bit of baking powder and baked a batch of biscuits. I brought a big <laughs> basket of biscuits back to the bakery and baked a basket of big biscuits. Then I took the big basket, toy, toy, toy of biscuits and the basket of big biscuits and mixed the big biscuits with the basket of biscuits that was next to the big basket and put a bunch of biscuits from the basket into the biscuit mixer. <laughs> And brought the basket of biscuits and the box of mixed biscuits and the biscuit mixer to the bakery and opened it. <laughs> Misker! Oh, Misker! That was huge! That was huge! Misker. I love I you, though, Terrafield. Your Irish accent is completely a I misrepresentation. Win. I hate you so much. Why did we do that? I'll see you next podcast, Terrafield. Fuck off. Your sheet schlitter. Okay. I'm back. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you mixer, whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Well, that's enough for me. I'm out of here. So I think Ono actually passed that challenge. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Um, contact us for anything that uh, you might want to get read out on the air, you know? But we're, we're good at solving problems as well. So if you have a problem... Mm-hmm. Uh, feel free to email that in and uh, we've actually helped millions in the past so we're <laughs> more than willing to help one. you <laughs> well technically we do have one under our belt and it was somebody that we told you got to get out there more exactly and he's now living a productive lifestyle so Flying well high. done uh, that's it thanks so much for listening to this podcast that has taken three weeks to make. I don't know what that was. No! Mamma mia! That's a mouthful. It's time for mouthful. Alright, I gotta run off to the microwave and heat my food up like heathen scum that's been sitting out for the past hour. Owen! will, of course, entertain you for this one minute. In the way! How? <laughs> All right, I haven't put my headphones on, but this is my warning. I don't know what he's doing. It sounds like he's molesting an animal again for sexual gratification. I have some ham and potatoes. (laughs) Wow, way to push the boat out. I'm going to read a humorous story that my aunt sent me. (laughs) Your aunt sending you material for the podcast? (laughs) No. Here you go, She sent me a story that she thought don't mind me cutting my food up here. She said, that would be good for the podcast. She sent me a story that she found cute. And normally I don't like these things. But I thought... I thought this was pretty cute. Let me just put my little salt on here. Not too much. Because of sodium. Sodium schmodium. All right. Ah, civilized. A Minneapolis couple decided to go to Florida to thaw out during a particular icy winter. They planned to stay at the same hotel where they spent their honeymoon 20 years earlier. Because of hectic schedules, it was difficult to coordinate the travel schedules. So the husband left Minnesota and flew to Florida on Tuesday with his wife lying down the following day. The husband checked into the hotel. There was a computer in his room so he decided to send an email to his wife. However, he accidentally left out one letter in her email address. And he didn't realize his error, so he sent the email. Right? Meanwhile, somewhere in Houston, this poor woman, a widow, had just returned home from her husband's funeral. He was a minister who was called home to glory following a heart attack. The widow decided to check her email, expecting messages from relatives and friends. After reading the first message, she screamed and fainted 
The widow's son rushed into the room, found his mother on the floor, and saw the computer screen, which read, To my loving wife. Subject, I've arrived. <laughs> I know you're surprised to hear from me. They have computers here now, and you're allowed to send emails to your loved ones. I've just arrived and have been checked in. I see that everything has been prepared for your arrival tomorrow. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing you then. Hope your journey is as uneventful as mine was. <laughs> P.S. Sure is friggin' hot down here. <laughs> so, thank I you, Aunt Betty. The funniest mouth fill you hmm. ever done. Hmm. Since changing the format, might I add? Hmm. I'll have to ask my aunt for more. <laughs> Thanks, Aunt Betty. <laughs> You're more productive in the podcast than Phil is. <laughs> Higher. Her and Aaron. Well, how's that food tasting? <laughs> it's good. I didn't realize how hungry I was. <laughs> uh, you keep scoffing that in your mouth. Yeah, you take care of things, all right? Mm. All right. Well, once again, thanks for listening. If you made it this far, feel free to email in contact at waveofsetty.com. Got some news? Got a story mm. that relates to anything? Email in us, Owen versus Phil. You know, who would you want to cut? <laughs> 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 Whoa. That's... Us. No. Well, Phil, mm. uh, you're going to go off and continue eating, and I'm going to be stuck here editing this for today's release. Wonderful. You're the editor. Please, uh, if you want your email read for the next episode, please get your emails in lickety split. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. B- <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks. What well, what's wrong with thank you people? Oh, I thought you were thanking me. Oh, no, no, I don't communicate with I people. I thought you were thanking me. I thought Why that would, would I be thank you. I don't know. Why would you? <laughs> Why would I? Why is it always going to be about you? Get me God, more salt. No. <laughs> you want more salt? Have some soup, you fuck. <laughs> you want sodium? Drink a cup of soup. Whoever has a cup of salad. <laughs> exactly. No, you can't use that. Yes, I can. <laughs> That's going to be an odd pace job because we're yelling. <laughs> Why don't we all calm down for a second? <laughs> Fuck off, O'Neill. Oh, I see. You come for the ham and potatoes, <laughs> did you? I heard that you are celebrating Irish Day. Mm, I've been <laughs> celebrating Irish Day with ham and potatoes for the last 72 hours. Why such a big ham? Oh, sorry. Neighbors keep giving us ham <laughs> because they're Jewish, and I don't. I'm like, where do you keep getting the ham from? <laughs> it's like my mother-in-law. Doesn't she know you're Jewish? <laughs> Christ, that and meatballs, <laughs> dude. That's awesome. <laughs> it, it is. Well, no, because sometimes it's really it's like eight months expired food. Sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's not. The one time he dropped off, he's like, here, I just don't... Please just take this bag. My mother-in-law keeps giving me food that we don't have room for. I'm like, ah. <laughs> All right. I'll go through your half-edible foods. So, yeah. I would like free food. Well, yeah, I'm not complaining about that, but sometimes I feel like he doesn't even look. He just expects me to take it, whatever, and throw it out if I don't want it. Or, you know, it's kind of rude to be like, here, if you don't want it, give it to the charities. Well, no, if you don't want it, you give it to the charities. I'm not your charity go-to person. Oh, but I could go for more potatoes. Red potatoes. Mm -hmm. You don't have many potatoes over here in Ireland. Great potato famine again. Too soon, no, no. Sorry, Jerome. Are we still recording? What's going on? What are we doing? Is this how we're interacting (laughs) without the podcast? I'm dubby by recording. I don't know. You don't do O'Neill when we're not podcasting. That's <laughs> fucked up. I didn't. He jumped in. I'm stopping my recording. Don't stop my recording there too, Phil. Please, O'Neill. Fuck off. Jesus Christ, Owen. No. Fuck off. <laughs>